Hello friends and welcome to the Nituation Room. Yay! In this series of videos I hope to be sharing about my love for knitting, squish, yarn, fluff, creativity, color, all of those things. I watch a lot of other YouTube videos and on knitting, knitting podcasts, vlogcasts, vlogcasts, vlogcasts. And I really get a lot out of them, especially while I'm sitting there knitting away. So this is my contribution to put a little bit more out of my knitting process and creativity into the world. So uh, if any of that sounds interesting you, in, to you, please stick around with me. I'm going to be doing a, a little show and tell of what I'm wearing, as well as projects I'm working on. And I think that's about all I'm going to get to today. I'm going to probably do future videos talking about past projects, um, but there's just so many of them and I'd like to have some space to get into the details. So if any of that sounds interesting, stay tuned. Like I said already, I'm repeating myself, whatever. Bear with me. It's my first time. So yeah, I'll give just a quick background. My name is Sharon. I live in the beautiful foothill town of Grass Valley, California, and I, among many things, I love knitting. It's been, it's been taking over as my biggest creative obsession in the past two years. Previous to that, I had been pretty full-time bead weaving maker. Um, I sell my work on my Instagram is um, Vine Creations, V-I-I-N-E. But lately I've had the time and space and financial flexibility to be able to devote to knitting, which is a much more personal process for me um, because I don't sell my knitwear. I just make it for myself and to the, for those who I love. So anyway, this is me too. This is me intending to share more of that. Okay, so I've been knitting. I started knitting when I was in college, maybe 2004, 2005. I was an early raveler. Um, and then I was knitting, spinning, natural dyeing uh, at the very beginning and making all sorts of weird stuff. I pretty much have none of that left. All of the material, all of the yarns, any of the projects, all disappeared out of my life when I moved to Hawaii and didn't need knitwear. I was also traveling a lot. I was gone for six months out of the year. Um, I did a lot of long distance backpacking trips in New Zealand and on the Continental Divide Trail through Colorado and other places. So I pretty much gave up all of the amassed things that I had and all of my knitting. So once I moved back to California, or not back, yeah, I was born, yeah. Once I moved to California four years ago, um, I got to a place where it was in a tropical climate. There's a little bit of a winter and my life settled down enough that I could have things, crafty things like yarn again. And about, it's been almost two years since my knitting, the knitting bug, the knitting fire got re-sparked in me. So... And that was mostly due to shout out Heathered Yarn Co., my local yarn shop here in Grass Valley. Um, I guess it was during the pandemic, 2020? No, it was 2021, not until 2021 that I started knitting again. Um, and things escalated quite a bit. I think I went to the yarn store, Heathered Yarn Store, and it was also in the same shop building where I was selling some of my jewelry so I was going in there anyway and she had just moved into the building and I was like oh maybe I'll start knitting again this was totally a thing that I did for a long time and yeah I think that was what re-sparked my knitting obsession so thank you Heather for starting your shop right at the perfect time for me be to become obsessed with knitting again and yeah, so that's been almost two years that I've been doing that. So I'll share more about my past projects from that time and maybe the evolution of my knitting at a later date. But today, let's talk about what I've currently got on my needles 
and on my body. So, okay, so I'll start with what I'm wearing. This is the Beltane sweater by uh, Witching Hour Knits, made in, and I did a lot of alterations. I'll tell you about the alterations. The yarn that I used are both colorways that Heather from Heather Yarn Co. made. This one's called, um, I have my notes right here, Full Pink Moon 2, which was one of her limited edition anniversary, second anniversary colorways. And then this one is Screaming Trees. I love bright colors. If you haven't already noticed, I love bright colors all the time since I was a little girl. So uh, hopefully you enjoy seeing bright, vibrant colors because that's mostly all I'll be sharing on this podcast. So these are the yarns I used. I did a bit of striping. You can see I striped the screaming trees in and I did like 10 stitches between 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then I switched to the screaming trees for the lace at the bottom. This is a really easy top down raglan, no extra short rows shaping or anything um, with a fun eyelet for the increases on the raglan stitches on the sleeves. It also is a really lightweight fabric. I was looking for things to wear in the summer, and this is a pretty successful one, even though it is merino wool. Oh yeah, fingering weight merino wool. Um, I use size US 9 needles. I don't know what millimeter that is. Sorry, guys. I'm just usually using the imperial, imperial measurements, US measurements for needle sizes. So it creates a pretty open fabric keeping it nice and lightweight. I also cropped the sleeve and I think this is the first time that I had ever done lace work. Has some nice lace details which was fun and easy. Yeah this knitted up really quickly. It's cropped you can see and also this is a jumpsuit I'll show you. That my husband just made me. He likes to sew. I picked up the fabric at a discount uh, fabric store down in Sacramento a couple weeks ago and he I gave him one of my old um he based it off of a, a piece of clothing that I wore I wore out. Um, that I wore out in the last year and a half, and he drafted his own pattern based on that. And I love it. It's like a sweatshirt material, so soft, so cozy, has pockets, and I like the scoop neck, so it shows off whatever other thing I have under now, on going on underneath. So, yeah, that's what I'm wearing. I feel like this is going fast. I feel like I could probably fill in more details, but I don't know what to say right now about it. And also I've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven works in progress to show you. So I guess I'll just get along with that to that. So, all right, I'm going to start with the one, my most recent cast on this one. I'm very excited about. I've always loved Entrelac and I've been looking for an Entrelac garment project. So I chose, oh, let me get the actual paper pattern, which is right here. This one, the Lil Lac sweater from Deegan. I've loved her designs. I've knitted one of her other garments as well, but she just released this one a few days ago. It's a big boxy oversized cardigan with all the colors, which I love. So I have been, I usually cast on late at night. I mean, not that late. I cast on at 8.45 PM last night. And uh, this is how much I've got going so far. So that's the first my latest cast on. I So the pattern calls for using DK weight or two strands of fingering uh, held together. 
to, but she also says that gauge is not the most important. Like it, since it's such a big oversized boxy sweater, um, it's probably meant to be worn with at least 10, 12 inches of positive ease. And yeah, so I had gotten, I'm in love with woolen spun, non-super wash, non-treated wool, and also in love with Brooklyn tweed. So I recently went to Rumpelstiltskin, which is a shop, yarn shop in Sacramento, which is only an hour away from me, because they carry all the whole range of what Brooklyn Tweed offers. So I got a whole bunch of, I got 20 different colors, which is nuts, of tone between Tones Light and Brooklyn Tweed Loft, which are their woolen spun fingering weight yarns, and knew that I would knit them all together in some crazy color, uh, crazy uh, garment with all the colors. I've never actually knitted an entire garment in one color. I don't think I've ever done that yet. There's always been at least two different yarns involved. But um, anyway, so this is the yarn that I'm using. The thing with the Brooklyn Tweed wool and spun yarn is that it plumps up, it, it grows in terms of, you can knit it on larger size needles and then other fingerings, it's very uh, grippy. It's got some, how do they call it, tooth? It's got tooth to it. And so, yeah, I thought this would be a good option for a cardigan like that, or a, a sweatshirt, sweater like this, because uh, it's so huge. And I do not like wearing heavy things, and I thought that it would get too heavy if I made it with a superwash yarn or with a group of superwash DK yarns. I did. I made a mistake of doing that in a past pattern, and I'm not repeating that again. So anyway, that's why I chose wool and spun. And also, I'm trying to just do one strand of this fingering weight. So I'm supposed to use U.S. size six needles, but instead. I'm going to try using US, well actually I went down to a US 4, um, but I'm going to go up in this size, so there's just two sizes for this pattern um, since they're so oversized, so to compensate for my tighter gauge, I'm planning on knitting one size bigger. Uh, so hopefully it'll still be nice and big and oversized. And I also will probably add a few more entrelac rows um, to make up for the difference in vertical gauge. So anyway, that's what I'm probably going to do. I rarely ever follow any pattern without altering it. I always mess with patterns, but it's nice to have them as a starting point. So yeah, we'll see. And also I know my tri my diamonds, my basket woven wax are going to be smaller. So it's going to be busier, I guess. But I like that. That's fine with me. And also I can fit more colors because there's I think there's only 17 or 18 color repeats in this. Um, and I have 20 colors that I want to use. So I'm going to probably add a few more lock rows, interlock rows in there. I'm very excited. This will probably be a longer term project because it's so big and knitting interlock is time consuming. It's basically making little short row squares and then picking up some stitches on the side to make your next row ac going across. It looks so cool. From the first time I started knitting it was, I was always obsessed. So that's my first project that I just started last night, which would have been September 26th. I don't know when I'm posting this, but that was yesterday according to today. All right, so that was my first project and I will move on to uh, this, another one that I'm still working on. It's the Moon Cardi by Ariana Frasca, Frasca, Frasca. And I'm knitting this one as a, part of um, the Heathered Yarn Co. Spooky Make Along. I thought the moon, so it has moon phases on the back. I'm grabbing a project right here. Oh. 
Um, it's a big, another big oversized cardigan and it's knit up so it's plain garter stitch and then it has these moon phases on the back and you can see I'm about, I'm over halfway done with the body portion. It's very big and I'm loving how it's turning out so far. So this is for the Heathered Yarn Co. Spooky Make Along. Whatever spooky means to you, have a project that goes, that's spooky. Oh no, of course I just dropped stitches. There we go, I got them back on there. Um, so the yarns that I'm using for this are Elizabeth Lavold Silky Wool in color 220. I got a whole pack of 10 of these. I ordered them from my local yarn store, Heathered Yarn Co. I chose this yarn because, again, with such a big gar garment, I did not want it to be heavy. And this stuff is nice and lightweight for, and this is supposed to be a DK weight. I think it's a light DK. I feel it, it definitely feels lighter on the lighter end of the spectrum, but it has a lot of silk. What is it? 45% wool, 35% silk, and 20% nylon. So it's a wool nylon, old wool silk nylon blend. Um, yeah, so it's lighter weight. And then the fun color that I paired it with is this wonderful color changing. It's by Feederbrook Farm, their Entropy DK in Luminous Flux, I believe is the color waning on this. I love working with these color changing yarns. I also really like this because it is, I think it's BFL, Blue Place Leicester Wool, um, and it is also a non-superwash, which I appreciate. This DK is quite a bit heavier than the Silky Wool DK. Working with it in the same project, I can really tell the difference, but it's fine. But I really like how the colors are going together. It's going to be really fun. It features a twisted rib on the edging, and then I'll also be picking up a bajillion stitches and doing another twisted rib edging on the front panel, or collar, what do you call that? Probably collar. And then I'm debating, I don't like long poofy sleeves because they get into whatever I'm working on. Sometimes I like three quarters, so I might do like a three quarter bubble sleeve, maybe. I think that might be kind of cool. So I might go with that for my sleeve. Um, and actually I am following this pattern pretty, pretty to a T, which is unusual for me. Usually I make alterations, but this one, um, I'm using the same gauge, same needle size that's suggested. I mean, obviously not the same wools that are suggested, but I'm not doing too many alterations. So I'm working on this. This has been my nighttime knitting lately. And then after that, what else do I want to do next? I'll show you, I'm making a project for my husband. He's been making me all sorts of clothes and I feel like I need to make him some nice things. And he requested a shawl scarf that he could fold in half. Um, Cause he has another one that's store bought that it's like a black and white checker cotton woven fabric. And he wanted something about the same size as that. So I'm just making this up as I go. I'll show you what I've got for now. untangled here. All right, so this is my husband's shawl. It's a square shawl. I'm doing it in the round circularly and making it, uh, just doing increases, little lace increases. So you make a square, it'll fold over like this eventually, go around his neck. And I'm mixing three different colors of 
It's Wolf Folk Snow Yarn. Let me get the tag. Oh yeah, Wolf Folk. Wolf Folk Snow. Three different colors. It's a merino wool. And it's just so soft. So soft, so nice, so lightweight. Um, yeah, and colors you would like, which are very different than the colors I would like. But it's like this white black marl, uh, maroon black, and then like a dusty gray navy and black marl. Marled yarns. And I'm just randomly doing striping in here. We'll see how it progresses. Um, oh yeah, and then I'm doing like, so it's stockinette and then I do a garter ridge about every 10 rows. I'm doing a garter ridge just for some interest. And yeah, just self drafted made up pattern. But I think it's turning out well and he likes it so far. Another really easy knit. And I think I started that, I don't know, less than a week ago. I'm just going to go until I run out of my three balls of yarn. So there's that project. And then the next project is... What else do I want to show? Oh, I'll show you one of my new sweaters. It's not, it's like basically done. I just need to weave in ends and finish some things. But this is based. It's my wonderful... Here, I'll scoot back and show you. Rainbow. Rainbow tunic sweater. There. It's a little better. Three quarter length sleeves. And this is based on Coco Knits pattern. Um, the Molly sweater is the recipe I used. And you can see it has this wonderful English tailing, tailoring detail. The way she can, she uh, designs her sweaters. The top seam is offset, not on top. And then it, and then you get like this really nice shoulder cuff that cups the top of your shoulder. It's just really tailored fitted kind of construction. And then a nice crew neck that, yeah, it's like a very circular crew neck done with some extra short row shaping in here. I really love it. So this one, I blasted out really fast in less than a week. I made this one. It's knit at a, like a DK gauge, DK weight gauge. Oh no. Yeah. I use size US seven needles on this. Um, and I held a fingering, superwash fingering hand dyed yarn with a strand of Surrey silk alpaca fluff yarn. I prefer Surrey alpaca over um, over mohair. I think it's way less squish, uh, scratchy and is so much nicer to wear against my skin. And so the different yarns that I used in this are, uh, we just had the Sierra Nevada yarn crawl last weekend and that Heathered Yarn Co. at my local yarn shop, uh, Teal Torch Knits was there doing a trunk show. So I got a whole bunch of her uh, Surrey Silk Alpaca. So this light pink I got from her, then um, like a coral, all of this fade of colors came from Teal Torch. And then the Surrey Silk down here, this minty green and the bl turquoise blue came from uh, Hue Loco online. And then I used two different, uh, three different um, indie dyers for the superwash fingering sock weight. Um, up here is um, Hue Loco from one of her more recent, uh, is it the Glow Stick collection? Um, one of the colorways, Lumi, I think was the name of the colorway that I used. It's like this rainbow variegated. And then I faded it into the bottom here. You can't really tell a difference, but you can kind of see. Um, but one of um, one of Heathered Yarn Co's um, 
fun colorways. I saw only one skein that she made, but it was amazing. It was like psychedelic freak out. Heather, I don't know. Maybe I'm getting that wrong. But I saw it at the yarn crawl. And I was like, oh my god, I have to have that skein. I almost like fought another knitter. I was like, oh, look at that yarn. I mean, I didn't literally fight, but she gave it to me. She's like, you can have this skein. I know it's the only one left. So I was very grateful she gave it to me for letting me have it. Let me buy it anyway. Um, so that's what the bottom part of the sweater is. And then just at the end of the sleeves, where it's more pink here, um, I faded in um, hedgehog fibers I from one of the I, I I purchased many of their um fade sets like seven skein sock yarn fade sets in the past year and this is one of the colorways from one of those and it's like a fun pink red black yellow variegated speckled majestic yarn so anyway those are the yarns some of the yarns I used um I love fading it's just it's just like candy to me hmm. and I did a couple of fun little things I did a garter edge with a split hem high low hem on the front I would played with just doing some eyelets in my garter and then on my sleeves I did this like basket weave kind of situation with eyelets as well and that was that was fun. Little details instead of just doing plain ribbing. So I'm very excited to wear this. My intention was to be able to wear this with leggings in the colder months. And yeah, so I started the, yeah, it was less than a week that I needed this. And I just have to stitch up my armpits and weave in some of my ends, wash and block it, and then I can wear it. Although it's still too warm to wear it. But when I, when the weather approves I'm gonna start wearing it okay and then all right I'm gonna share another work in progress uh, I always have a pair of tube socks that I'm working on such as this one this is one current one I'm almost done I only have this much yarn left I start up at the at the toe and literally stockinette. I just do some increases for the toe and then just stockinette. Plain old stockinette. It's fun to have this as like a mindless knitting option. And this is what I take with me when I walk my dog most days. Um, I guess I like to knit while I walk my dog. I don't hold on to his leash. He's on a hip belt. So I am hands-free most of the time. And then I just have my knitting bag and stitch away. I like to use the Chiaogu minis for the small circumference knitting. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. I think it's size US2 needle. And this yarn is from Shirley Bryan Yarns in Canada. And it's uh, her deconstructed sock fade set. I've purchased probably seven different colorways in these amazing speckled fades. I absolutely love them. And she does two 50 gram balls or 50 gram skeins that match each other. So they're meant for socks and it's really easy. I just ball them up and start knitting. And with 50 grams, it ends up being about knee high length, which is fun. I, I love I love that length. Um, I put them over my leggings. I wear a lot of leggings in the winter or with a skirt or dress. So yeah, this is my one of my current socks that I'm almost done with. And then for another, this is like a big project that I'm very proud of and very happy with that I drafted myself. Um, it is also in Brooklyn Tweed with a touch of Heathered Yarn Co. Um, so this one actually I made before my husband started making me these, but it was to recreate the same, I never know whether it's a jumpsuit or a romper, what you call these things with the legs. But um, anyway, I wanted to knit one of these. So I used, woolen spun 
yarn from Brooklyn Tweed and also um, this is the uh, the Royal Bee Yarn Company, this blue, and this is a merino woolen spun worsted. These are all worsted weight yarns and you can see it's like an insane <laughs> romper jumpsuit with the wide leg. I still need to sew up the crotch. <laughs> But yeah, I self-drafted it and then I have a fun little moon phase detail on the back. I based it off of like basic Coco Knits construction. So I did this triangle back here first and then I picked up stitches here and started knitting my front band. And then I did, I don't know, I just played around with shaping for the back and then impromptu added this moon phase. This moon phase design was actually from my uh one of my earring designs here i'll show you one of the earring designs i make is that same moon phase and so i just used my graph paper design that i made for that and adapted it to my knitting and it worked great just a little intarsia stranded color work thing oh i'm getting my earrings back and this is um, the Heathered Yarn Co. yarn, Dream Date. And then I did an I-cord edging also with Dream Date. And I think it looks so fun. And I'm very pleased with my scoop neck. It took, I, I ripped this out several times um, as I was going to get the proper increases, increased rate, and then I scoop. Um, I haven't taken very good notes, so I can't. I might go back and take better notes to, sh to remember how I did that shaping. I didn't do any short rows because I couldn't, uh, yeah, I didn't do short rows, but um, I got a nice scoop and then it's basically a tube. I don't know if I did any increases on the sides. I don't think I did any increases on the sides, but I did start doing an increases only in the back for the booty section and on the sides for the hips. And you can see I did a fun striping pattern. I think four, five. These stripes are five stitches, and then um, five stitch stripes of the contrast colors. And then I did like a like a fade, kind of like I did here. So this is ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then that was perfect because that's when I split for the legs and then for the legs so that they wouldn't be too long I switched my contrast stripe colors to four stitches long or four rows four rows long and then um, increase so there's two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then just finished off here I might do an I-cord uh, edging on the bottom of these but I haven't decided yet but I was very pleased with this. I'm really glad I used woolen spun yarn because this would have been way too heavy otherwise. I still might add a little bit of um, elastic in my eye cord just so I can get the, uh, here I'll come sit down so you're not just like staring at my chest. Um, I might run some elastic through my eye cord edging so that um, it will help keep the elasticity and keep it the straps from getting dra dragged down too much. Um, but it's a lot lighter than it would have been if it was a worsted spun or a superwash yarn. So, so happy with this. This also, I was a maniac knitting this. I also, I knitted this in about a week also. My hands were so tired and sore and I had a few days where I knitted probably for eight or 10 hours. Um, but I was so excited about it and I just wanted to get it done. And it's pretty simple, like it's just circular stockinette. But the colors made it so much fun for me. So that is, I think, the final um, work in progress. I have one project that I have gauge swatched for and I have ready to cast on, but I have not yet. That is the um, the No Sweatshirt by Park and Knit. I've been wanting to do a hoodie for a while. This is a hoodie. And this one, I actually did even get her suggested yarn, which is 
Noro. Uh, what's this one? Kakigori. Nora Kakigori. And it is a blend of cotton, silk, viscose, and pollen lide. It's a DK, I believe. But I love it. It's so speckly. I don't have... I wear all the colors, but I don't have a nice solid turquoise garment. I think this would be really fun and go with all of my other bright colored things. Um, so I got this fun speckly, slightly variegated turquoise yarn from Noro for a no sweatshirt, which is, it looks like a sweatshirt kind of hoodie. Um, I think it's fairly cropped. I don't know if I'll do full length sleeves. I'll probably do three coats. Maybe I'll do full length sleeves. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. So that's ready to cast on. Okay. Well, whew. that was a lot. Thanks for sticking with me, man. Doing these videos is a lot like trying to remember all the things that you want to say. And, um, yeah. But anyway, I hope that was interesting. Please let me know. Please send, feel free to send any comments, what you think about any of the patterns or the color choices, or um, if you've knit any of these projects, I'd love to see or have you share about them or any, um, yeah, anything else. Thanks for, thanks for following along. Um, there's gonna be more videos, hopefully. Hopefully I'll get better at this and soon, yeah, I, I like to share some other features of maybe some of my finished objects. Yeah, you can share with what you're most interested in seeing because I've got tons of summer knits, like summer tops. I have some dresses that I've made that I'd love to share about. And then I could show you my sweater journey. I have shawls, I have some hats, uh, some other things. Oh. Do you see all those yarns back there? That That's the 20 colors I was talking about for um, for my la little lax sweater. I still need to be skinned up, but I think that's gonna be the color order that I follow. And then also featured on the back wall are a bunch of, if you were like, what the heck are all those blobby colorful things? Those are dried flowers. I also work trade at a local flower farm and I love doing stuff with dried flowers. So my husband built me those racks and they're stashing a lot of my dried flowers that I design with and make things like over there, like those little round things. And um, so yeah, that's some of the, I have, yeah, those are some of the other things that I do, but this is my creative space, the situation room. I like that pun. The situation room. So that's what I'm calling this space. Um, anyway, I'm rambling now, but thanks for watching and I'll see you again on another episode.